Hi everyone, so time for another video. Just before we kick off with the video, just wanted to wish you all a happy new year and um, thank you so much for getting me to that thousand subscriber mark by 2024. Uh, we ended up uh, at 1,050 subscribers and it's growing um, every single day, so I appreciate that. Um, should be a relatively short video here. Okay, so I started to get quite a lot of questions around, is there any other way of being able to virtualize an environment? Uh, you will have seen that a lot of my videos have been using public cloud to, to do it. Um, I'm, I'll be honest, it's still my preferred method because I believe that you get the best of both worlds in that you learn how to deploy into public cloud environments. Uh, so you're picking up skills there, but it also represents more of a real world scenario in, in my opinion. So uh, you're, you're assigned public IP addresses and you don't have to worry about thinking about what Nat's going to do. Um, but um, for the people that have asked, there is other ways of um, spinning up many um, Fortinet products. Um, so what I've done here is I have built out um, a VMware workstation environment on a secondary uh, PC that is predominantly used for sim racing um, here. It's a fairly decent spec machine, so it's got a 13th gen i9, 32 gig of very fast RAM. It's also got an M2 drive in it. It doesn't need to be very highly spec, but um, if you're wanting to run uh, lots of virtualized machines, then you are going to need a fairly decent CPU and um, a fair, fair amount of RAM. So you'll see on the left hand side, um, I've got um, a few virtual instances running. So I've got four Windows machines, uh, London, France, Germany, and Poland. And then I've got four virtual 40 gates running as well. London, France, Germany, and Poland again. Actually spinning up the virtual machines is very simple. Um, so if I go to um, open a virtual machine, you'll see that uh, I've got a directory created already with the two 40 OS images that um, I am running. Uh, 726 is, is currently the version that I will base my videos on. 742 um, is purely for um, looking into the future, in my opinion, um, on what features are coming. Um, 726 is borderline production ready. Uh, 74 isn't, in my opinion, at the moment. So we're going to go, seeming as we're just deploying um, for a demonstration, we'll, we'll deploy uh, an image of um, 642. So you'll see that I've got um, a VMware image um, already saved to this machine um, that uh, has been downloaded from the Fortinet support um, website. Uh, make sure that you download the right image. Uh, don't download 40 firewall, 40 OS or 40 carrier. Uh, it's the other image that you require. So click open on that next. Just put a name for the machine. I'll just put 40 bytes demo. We'll go with the VMware network virtualization. So VMX uh, net free. Just um, 40 bytes bytes demo. You don't need to do anything else. You can all be done after. You'll see that it appears on the left hand side and starts to boot. So after around five minutes, you'll see that you just get the usual um, 40 gate login. Um, I'll just set a password on that. 
and you get into the Fortinet CLI as usual. So if I do show system interface port one, you'll see that the port one interface is currently set to a static IP. Uh, something super important within VMware is the interface allocation. So if I go over here, right click, and then see that network adapter is set to bridged. Um, this, this corresponds to port one. That's exactly what I want on port one, but port two, I actually want to stick that into its own VM net. So I'm gonna do VM net 15 on that. I'll explain in a minute. Now on the, I want to get the uh, machine and IP address on my LAN um, via DHCP. So if I just do config system interface, edit port one, set mode DHCP, then do a show, you see that that's there, and now the configuration should apply. And I do get system interface, interface physical physical or one you'll see that it's been assigned a dhcp address on my LAN of 10 90, 90 59 so if i now jump over to 10 90, 90 59 and log in you'll see that i'll get a license page um I don't have, I'm not going to apply a license to this one, but I do have another FortiGate that I have licensed. Um, so London, if you remember, I had London. Um, you can see that the London instance is running here just fine. So if you, we just bring our focus back to London now, because this is already a running and established environment. Um, so on the left-hand side, you have got the London 48 appliance. The look and feel, even though it's virtualized, is exactly the same. Uh, but what I what you have the ability to do using virtualization is I now have a Windows machine that is behind port 2. I'm just going to make this a little bit more uh, user-friendly. I'll just use this window like this. So yeah, I've got a Windows machine that sits behind port two um, on the gate. So if you look at network interfaces, port two, you've got 172.16.1.1 with ping enabled. And if I do an IA, a CMD and an IA IP config on that, config there we go you'll see that it's got 172.16.1.2 and it can ping 172.16.1.1 which should be able to yeah okay now the secret source for this is actually inside uh, vmware so if i just maximize this up so under the gates for London, you will see that if I go to settings, the network adapter for port one is bridged. That's what we want. But the network adapter for port two is in its own VM net, uh, VM net 10. That's its own uh, virtual network. And then london the windows machine has only one network interface and you'll see that that has also been placed in vm net 10. so just to demonstrate this if i'm pinging the default gateway that is 172.16.1.1 that's the port 2 address of the gates you'll see that it's it's constantly pinging but if i then go into settings and just for a second pop this into VMnet 18, it should stop responding. Yeah. So there's a few benefits to this. It potentially means that you can move virtual machines around on the fly. So you don't need a virtual machine to sit behind each gate. You could just have a couple and move them around. 
um, but uh, I've got plenty of resources here to be able to do that. Uh, VM VMNet 10 should, yeah, because I moved it back, it should start responding now. Um, and yeah, that's the benefit. Um, if you look at the task manager on this machine, uh, you'll see that it's, I mean, I've got how many instances running at the minute? So I've got four Windows Lite machines and five 40 gates running. And you'll see that um, it's using 28 gig uh, and it's not even batting an eyelid on my CPU. Um, I don't know, know whether I'll be running any more than this. Um, if I do, then I'll just simply increase the memory consumption of this machine. So that wraps this video up. Uh, so it's just another way of creating a virtual environment for, for you all. Um, obviously, um, you're not paying compute and storage because you're using your own resources. You're just simply paying your electricity. Um, I would suggest that putting hosts behind the instances for testing is slightly easier um, as well. Uh, although, uh, being totally honest, I still prefer the public um, cloud deployment method because I, I believe it represents more of a real world um, scenario. Um, as always, continue to uh, support me with uh, likes. Um, I'm actually struggling at the moment for ideas around diff uh, content. Um, so if you do have any ideas or you would like to see anything specific, then um, please fill out the comments below with what you would like to see. Apart from that, we'll see you in the next video.